Odissi Odia, Orisi Odizi, also referred to as Orisi in older literature, is a major ancient Indian classical dance that originated in the Hindu temples of Odisha, an eastern coastal state of India. Odissi, in its history, was performed predominantly by women, and expressed religious stories and spiritual ideas, particularly of Vaishnavism Vishnu as Jagannath. Odissi performances have also expressed ideas of other traditions such as those related to Hindu gods Shiva and Surya, as well as Hindu goddesses Shaktism. The theoretical foundations of Odissi trace to the ancient Sanskrit text Natya Shastra, its existence in antiquity evidenced by the dance poses in the sculptures of Odissi Hindu temples, and archaeological sites related to Hinduism, Buddhism and Jainism. The Odissi dance tradition declined during the Islamic rule era, and was suppressed under the British rule. The suppression was protested by the Indians, followed by its revival, reconstruction, and expansion since India gained independence from the colonial rule. Odissi is traditionally a dance drama genre of performance art, where the artists and musicians play out a mythical story, a spiritual message, or devotional poem from the Hindu texts, using symbolic costumes, body movement, abhinaya expressions, and mudras gestures and sign language set out in ancient Sanskrit literature. Odissi is learnt and performed as a composite of basic dance motif called the bangas symmetric body bends, stance. It involves lower footwork, mid torso, and upper hand and head as three sources of perfecting expression and audience engagement with geometric symmetry and rhythmic musical resonance. An Odissi performance repertoire includes invocation, enrita pure dance, enritya expressive dance, natya dance drama, and moksha dance climax connoting freedom of the soul and spiritual release. Traditional Odissi exists in two major styles: the first perfected by women and focused on solemn spiritual temple dance, maharis; the second perfected by boys dressed as girls, godipuas, which diversified to include athletic and acrobatic moves and were performed from festive occasions in temples to general folksy entertainment. Modern Odissi productions by Indian artists have presented a diverse range of experimental ideas, culture fusion, themes and plays. Odissi was the only Indian dance form present in Michael Jackson's 1991 hit single Black or White. Topic: History The foundations of Odissi are found in Natya Shastra, the ancient Hindu Sanskrit text of performance arts. The basic dance units described in Natya Shastra, all 108 of them, are identical to those in Odissi. Natya Shastra is attributed to the ancient scholar Bharata Muni, and its first complete compilation is dated to between 200 BCE and 200 CE, but estimates vary between 500 BCE and 500 CE. The most studied version of the Natya Shastra text consists of about 6,000 verses structured into 36 chapters. The text, states Natalia Lidava, describes the theory of Tandava dance Shiva, the theory of rasa, of bhava, expression, gestures, acting techniques, basic steps, standing postures, all of which are part of Indian classical dances. Dance and performance arts, states this ancient text, are a form of expression of spiritual ideas, virtues and the essence of scriptures. The Natya Shastra refers to four vrittis methods of expressive delivery in vogue, Avanti, Dakshinatya, Panchali and Odra Magadhi. Of these, the Odra refers to Odisha. More direct historical evidence of dance and music as an ancient performance art are found in archaeological sites such as caves and in temple carvings of Bhubaneswar, Konarak and Puri. The Manchapuri cave in Udiagiri shows carvings of dance and musicians, and this has been dated to the time of Jain King Karavela in the 1st or 2nd century BCE. The Hathagumpha inscriptions, also dated to the same ruler, mention music and dance. He the king, versed in the science of the Gandharvas i.e., music, entertains the capital with the exhibition of dapa, dancing, singing and instrumental music and by causing to be held festivities and assemblies samajas. Hathagumpha inscription, line 5, tilde 2nd minus 1 stone century BCE. The musical tradition of Odisha also has ancient roots. Archaeologists have reported the discovery of 20 key, carefully shaped polished basalt lithophone in Sankarjang, the highlands of Odisha, which is dated to about 1000 BCE. Medieval era 
The Buddhist, Jain and Hindu archaeological sites in Odisha state, particularly the Asiya range of hills show inscriptions and carvings of dances that are dated to the 6th to 9th century CE. Important sites include the Ranagumpha in Udaijiri, and various caves and temples at Lalitjiri, Ritnagira and Alatjiri sites. The Buddhist icons, for example, are depicted as dancing gods and goddesses, with Haruka, Vajravarahi, and Marichi in Odissi-like postures. Historical evidence, states Alexandra Carter, shows that Odissi Maharis Hindu temple dancers and dance halls architecture not a mandap were in vogue at least by the 9th century CE. According to Kapila Vatsayan, the Kalpasutra of Jainism, in its manuscripts discovered in Gujarat, includes classical Indian dance poses, such as the Samapada, the Trabangi, and the Chuaka of Odissi. This, states Vatsayan, suggests that Odissi was admired or at least well known in distant parts of India, far from Odisha in the medieval era, to be included in the margins of an important Jain text. However, the Jain manuscripts use the dance poses as decorative art in the margins and cover, but do not describe or discuss the dance. Hindu dance texts such as the Abhinaya Chandrika and Abhinaya Darpana provide a detailed description of the movements of the feet, hands, the standing postures, the movement and the dance repertoire. It includes illustrations of the Quranas mentioned in Natyashastra. Similarly, the illustrated Hindu text on temple architecture from Odisha, the Shilpaprakasha, deals with Odia architecture and sculpture, and includes Odissi postures. Actual sculptures that have survived into the modern era and panel reliefs in Odia temples, dated to be from the 10th to 14th century, show Odissi dance. This is evidenced in Jagannath Temple in Puri, as well as other temples of Vaishnavism, Shaivism, Shaktism and Vedic deities such as Surya sun in Odisha. There are several sculptures of dancers and musicians in Konark Sun Temple and Brahmaswara Temple in Bhubaneswar. The composition of the poetic texts by 8th century Shankaracharya and particularly of divine love inspired Gitagavinda by 12th century Jayadeva influenced the focus and growth of modern Odissi. Odissi was performed in the temples by the dancers called Maharis, who played out these spiritual poems and underlying religious plays, after training and perfecting their art of dance starting from an early age, and who were revered as auspicious to religious services. <laughs> Mughal and British rule period After 12th century, Odia temples, monasteries and nearby institutions such as the Puspagiri in eastern Indian subcontinent came under waves of attacks and ransacking by Muslim armies, a turmoil that impacted all arts and eroded the freedoms previously enjoyed by performance artists. The official records of Sultan Firuz Shah Tughlaq's invasion in Odisha 1360 CE, for example, describe the destruction of the Jagannath Temple as well as numerous other temples, defacing of dancing statues, and ruining of dance halls. This led to a broad decline in Odissi and other religious arts, but there were some benevolent rulers in this period who supported arts particularly through performances at courts. During the Sultanate and Mughal era of India, the temple dancers were moved to entertain the Sultan's family and courts. They became associated with concubinage to the nobility. The Odissi dance likely expanded in the 17th century, states Alexandra Carter, under King Ramachandradeva's patronage. This expansion integrated martial arts akanda and athletics into Odissi dance, by engaging boys and youth called Godipuas, as a means to physically train the young for the military and to resist foreign invasions. According to Ragini Devi, historical evidence suggests that the Godipuas tradition was known and nurtured in the 14th century, by Raja of Kurda. During the British Raj, the officials of the colonial government ridiculed the temple traditions, while Christian missionaries launched a sustained attack on the moral outrage of sensuousness of Odissi and other Hindu temple dance arts. In 1872, a British civil servant named William Hunter watched a performance at the Jagannath Temple in Puri, then wrote, Indecent ceremonies disgraced the ritual, and dancing girls with rolling eyes put the modest worshipper to the blush, and then attacked them as idol worshipping prostitutes who expressed their devotion with airy gyrations. Christian missionaries launched the anti dance movement in 1892 to ban all such dance forms. The dancers were dehumanized and stigmatized as prostitutes during the British period. In 1910, the British colonial government in India banned temple dancing, and the dance artists were reduced to abject poverty from the lack of any financial support for performance arts, combined with stereotyping stigma. Topic: 
Topic: <laughs> Post-independence. The Temple Dance Ban and the cultural discrimination during the colonial rule marshaled a movement by Hindus to question the stereotypes and to revive the regional arts of India, including Odissi. Due to these efforts, the classical Indian dances witnessed a period of renaissance and reconstruction, which gained momentum particularly after Indians gained their freedom from colonialism. Odissi, along with several other major Indian dances, gained recognition after efforts by many scholars and performers in the 1950s, particularly by Kavichandra Kalacharan Patanayak, an Oriya poet, dramatist, and researcher. Patanayak is also credited with naming the dance form as Odissi. Repertoire Odissi, in the classical and medieval period has been, a team dance founded on Hindu texts. This drama dance involved women enacting a spiritual poem or a religious story either in the inner sanctum of a Hindu temple, or in the Natamandira attached to the temple. The Odissi performing Maharis combined pure dance with expression, to play out and communicate the underlying text through abhinaya gestures. The performance art evolved to include another aspect, wherein teams of boys, dressed as girls, called Godipuas expanded the Odissi repertoire, such as by adding acrobatics and athletic moves, and they performed both near the temples and open fairs for general folksy entertainment. In the Indian tradition, many of the accomplished Godipuas became the gurus teachers in their adulthood. Modern Odissi is a diversified performance art, men have joined the women, and its reconstruction since the 1950s have added new plays and aspects of other Indian dances. Love is a universal theme and one of the paradigmatic values in Indian religions. This theme is expressed through sensuous love poems and metaphors of sexual union in Krishna-related literature, and as longing eros in its dance arts such as in Odissi, from the early times. Hinduism, states Judith Hanna, encourages the artist to strive to suggest, reveal or re-create the infinite, divine self. An art is considered as the supreme means of realizing the universal being. Physical intimacy is not something considered as a reason for shame, rather considered a form of celebration and worship, where the saint is the lover and the lover is the saint. This aspect of Odissi dancing has been subdued in the modern post-colonial reconstructions, states Alexandra Carter, and the emphasis has expanded to "...expressions of personal artistic excellence as ritualized spiritual articulations." The traditional Odissi repertoire, like all classical Indian dances, includes N Rita pure dance, solo, N Ritya dance with emotions, solo, and Natya dramatic dance, group. These three performance aspects of Odissi are described and illustrated in the foundational Hindu texts, particularly the Natya Shastra, Abhinaya Dharpana and the 16th century Abhinaya Chandrika by Maheshwara Mahapatra of Odisha. The N Rita performance is abstract, fast and rhythmic aspect of the dance. The viewer is presented with pure movement in N Rita, wherein the emphasis is the beauty in motion, form, speed, range and pattern. This part of the repertoire has no interpretive aspect, no telling of story. It is a technical performance, and aims to engage the senses of the audience. The Enritya is slower and expressive aspect of the dance that attempts to communicate feelings, storyline particularly with spiritual themes in Hindu dance traditions. In a Enritya, the dance acting expands to include silent expression of words through the sign language of gestures and body motion set to musical notes. This part of a repertoire is more than sensory enjoyment, it aims to engage the emotions and mind of the viewer. The Natyam is a play, typically a team performance, but can be acted out by a solo performer where the dancer uses certain standardized body movements to indicate a new character in the underlying story. A Natya incorporates the elements of a Enritya. The Moksha is a climatic pure dance of Odissi, aiming to highlight the liberation of soul and serenity in the spiritual. Odissi dance can be accompanied by both Northern Indian Hindustani and Southern Indian Carnatic music, though mainly, recitals are in Odia and Sanskrit language in the Odissi music tradition. Topic sequence Traditional Odissi repertoire sequence starts with an invocation called Mangalakarana. A shloka hymn in praise of a god or goddess is sung, such as to Jagannath an avatar of Vishnu, the meaning of which is expressed through dance. Mangalakarana is followed by Pushpanjali offering of flowers and Bhumi Pranam salutation to Mother Earth. 
The invocation also includes Trikandi Pranam or the threefold salutation, to the Devas gods, to the Gurus teachers, and to the Lokas or Rasika fellow dancers and audience. The next sequential step in an Odissi performance is Batu, also known as Batu Enritya or Sainthei Enritya or Batuka Bhairava. It is a fast pace, pure dance and rita performed in the honor of Shiva. There is no song or recitation accompanying this part of the dance, just rhythmic music. This pure dance sequence in Odissi builds up to a Pallavi which is often slow, graceful and lyrical movements of the eyes, neck, torso and feet and slowly builds in a crescendo to climax in a fast tempo at the end. The Enritya follows next, and consists of abhinaya, or an expressional dance which is an enactment of a song or poetry. The dancers communicate the story in a sign language, using mudras hand gestures, bhavas enacting mood, emotions, eye and body movement. The dance is fluid, graceful and sensual. Abhinaya in Odissi is performed to verses recited in Sanskrit or Odia language. Most common are Abhinayas on Oriya songs or Sanskrit Ashthafadas or Sanskrit stutis like Dasavatar Stotram depicting the ten incarnations of Lord Vishnu or Ardhanari Stotram half-man, half-woman form of the divine. Many regionally performed Abhinaya compositions are based on the Radha Krishna theme. The Astapatis of the Radha Krishna love poem Gita Govinda, written by Jayadeva, are usually performed in Odisha as part of the dance repertoire. The Natya part, or dance drama, is next in sequence. Usually, Hindu mythologies, epics, and legendary dramas are chosen as themes. A distinctive part of the Odissi tradition is the inclusion of moksha or moksha finale in the performance sequence. This the concluding item of a recital. Moksha in Hindu traditions means spiritual liberation. This dance movement traditionally attempts to convey a sense of spiritual release and soul liberation, soaring into the realm of pure aesthetics. Movement and pose merge in a fast-paced pure dance climax. <laughs> <laughs> Basic moves and mudras The basic unit of Odissi are called bangas. These are made up of eight bailis, or body positions and movements, combined in many varieties. Motion is yuthas rising or up, bathas sitting or down, or stankas standing. The gates or movement on the dance floor is called chalas, with movement tempo linked to emotions according to the classical Sanskrit texts. Thus, for example, burhas or quick pace suggest excitement, while a slow confused pace suggests dejection. For aesthetics, movement is centered on a core, a point in space or floor, and each dancer has her imaginary square of space, with spins and expression held within it. The foot movement or pata betas too have basic dance units, and Odissi has six of these, in contrast to four found in most classical Indian dances. The three primary dance positions in Odissi are Samabhanga, the square position, with weight equally placed on the two legs, spine straight, arms raised up with elbows bent. Abhanga, the body weight shifts from side to side, due to deep leg bends, while the feet and knees are turned outwards, and one hip extending sideways. Trabhanga, is an S-shaped three-fold bending of body, with torso deflecting in one direction while the head and hips deflecting in the opposite direction of torso. Further, the hands and legs frame the body into a composite of two squares rectangle, providing an aesthetic frame of reference. This is described in the ancient Sanskrit texts, and forms of it are found in other Hindu dance arts, but Trabhanga postures developed most in and are distinctive to Odissi, and they are found in historic Hindu temple reliefs. Mudras or hastas are hand gestures which are used to express the meaning of a given act. Like all classical dances of India, the aim of Odissi is in part to convey emotions, mood and inner feelings in the story by appropriate hand and facial gestures. There are 63 hastas in modern Odissi dance, and these have the same names or structure as those in the pan-Indian Hindu texts, but most closely matching those in the Abhinaya Chandrika. These are subdivided into three, according to the traditional texts. Asamyukta Asta, single hand mudras 28 prakar gestures, for instance to communicate a salute, prayer, embrace, energy, bond, swing, carriage, shell, arrow, holding a thing, wheel, and so on. Samyukta Asta, double hand mudras 24 prakar gestures, for instance to indicate a flag, flower, type of bird or animal, moon, action like grasping, and so on. Enritya Asta, pure dance, mudrasth mudra system is derived from the Abhinaya Dharpana by Nanda Keshavara and the ancient Natya Shastra of Bharata Muni. Topic. 
Costumes The Odissi dancers are colorfully dressed with makeup and jewelry. The sari worn by Odissi dancers are brightly colored, and usually of local silk patisari. It is worn with pleats, or may have a pleat tailor stitched in front, to allow maximum flexibility during the footwork. These saris have traditional prints of Odisha with regional designs and embellishments, and may be the Sambalpuri sari and Bamkai sari. The jewelry includes silver pieces, a metal favored in regional tradition. The hair is tied up, and typically drawn into an elaborate bun resembling a Hindu temple spire, and decorated with sinthi. Their hairstyle may contain a moon shaped crest of white flowers, or a reed crown called mukut with peacock feathers, symbolism for Lord Krishna. The dancer's forehead is marked with tikka, and adorned with various jewelry such as the alaka head piece on which the tikka hangs. The eyes are ringed with kajal black eyeliner, ear covers called kappa or ear rings decorate the sides of the head, while necklace adorns the neck. The dancer wears a pair of armlets also called bahichudi or bijuband, on the upper arm. The wrist is covered with kankana bangles. At the waist they wear an elaborate belt which ties down one end of the sari. The ankles are decorated with a leather piece on top of which are bells gungru. The dancers' palms and soles may be painted with red-colored dye called the alta. Modern Odissi male performers wear dhoti, a broadcloth tied around waist, pleated for movement, and tucked between legs, usually extends to knee or lower. Upper body is bare-chested, and a long thin folded translucent sheet wrapping over one shoulder and usually tucked below a wide belt. Music and instruments Odissi dance is accompanied by Odissi music. The primary Odissi ragas are Kalyana, Nada, Sri Gauda, Bharati, Panchama, Dhanashri, Karnata, Bhairavi, and Shokabharati. Odissi dance, states Ragini Devi, is a form of visualized music wherein the ragas and raginis, respectively the primary and secondary musical modes, are integrated by the musicians and interpreted through the dancer. Each note is a means, has a purpose and with a mood in classical Indian music, which Odissi accompanies to express sentiments in a song through Pariya. This is true whether the performance is formal, or less formal as in Nartana and Natangi used during festive occasions and the folksy celebration of life. A distinctive feature of Odissi is that it includes both North and South Indian ragas, which in 20th century scholarship has been grouped as the Hindustani and the Carnatic music. According to Alessandra Royo, Odissi music integrates the music styles of the two major Indian music concert traditions, and does not have a separate systematic classification like those found in the North and South Indian traditions. According to Emi Nijenhus, Odissi music suggests performance arts and ideas were exchanged between the North and South India during the medieval era, and Odissi accepted both as a creative crucible of styles and ideas. Guru Ramahari Das, an eminent researcher and performer in Odissi music, counters this incorrect assumption. He states, Odissi music is a lot more lyrical as compared to Hindustani or Carnatic. Just like these two forms, it has its typical feel, its unique identity." Pandit Damodar Hoda also explicitly states the uniqueness of Odissi music thus, "...like the Saraswati river that formed the Triveni along with the Ganga and the Yamuna, Odissi was a distinct stream of music like the Carnatic and Hindustani. It evolved from the ritualistic music of the Jagannath temple of Puri, and the 12th-century saint poet Jayadeva was a prominent practitioner of it." Multiple scholars have systematically countered the notion of Odissi being simply a mixture of two other styles that themselves were named in the 20th century. Guru Diraj Mahapatra in his paper The Unique Features of Odissi Music, an overview mentions the characteristics due to which a music can be called classical and how Odissi music satisfies those criteria while establishing its distinctive nature. An Odissi troupe comes with musicians and musical instruments. The orchestra consists of various regional musical instruments, such as the mardala barrel drum, harmonium, flute, sitar, violin, cymbals held in fingers and others. <laughs> <laughs> Styles The Odissi tradition existed in three schools, Mahari, Nartaki, and Godipua. Maharis were Oriya Devadasis or temple girls, their name deriving from Maha great and Nari girl, or Mari chosen particularly those at the temple of Jagannath at Puri. 
Early Maharis performed N Rita pure dance and Abhinaya interpretation of poetry dedicated to various Hindu gods and goddesses as well as Puranic mythologies and Vedic legends. Later, Maharis especially performed dance sequences based on the lyrics of Jayadev's Gita Govinda. This style is more sensuous and closer to the classical Sanskrit texts on dance, music and performance arts. Godipuas were boys dressed up as girls and taught the dance by the Maharis. This style included martial arts, athletics and acrobatics. Godipuas danced to these compositions outside the temples and fairgrounds as folksy entertainment. Nartaki dance took place in the royal courts, where it was prevalent before the British period. <laughs> <laughs> Schools, training and recognition <laughs> Odissi maestros and performers Kelacharan Mohapatra, Gangadhar Pradhan, Pankaj Sharan Das, Deba Prasad Das and Raghunath Dutta were the four major gurus who revived Odissi in the late 40s and early 50s. Sanjukta Panagrahi was a leading disciple of Kelacharan Mohapatra who popularized Odissi by performing in India and abroad. In the mid-60s, three other disciples of Kelacharan Mohapatra, Kumkum Mohanti and Sonal Mansingh, were known for their performances in India and abroad. Laksamipriya Mohapatra performed a piece of Odissi Abhinaya in the Annapurna Theatre in Cuttack in 1948, a show upheld as the first classical Odissi dance performance after its contemporary revival. Guru Mayadar Raup played a pivotal role in giving Odissi dance its classical status. He introduced Mudra Vinyoga in 1955 and Sancharabhava in the Odissi dance items, and portrayed Sringara Rasa in Gita Govinda Ashdafadas. His notable compositions include Pashyati Dishi Dishi and Priya Charu Shail, composed in 1961. Topic schools S. R. Jan Guru Kelacharan Mohapatra Odissi Enridiyabhasa is a premier Odissi dance school and training institution founded by Guru Kelacharan Mohapatra in Bhubaneswar, Odisha in 1993. Now run by his son and disciple, Guru Ritikant Mohapatra, S. R. Jan is committed to preserving and popularizing the rich culture of Odissi by maintaining high standards of performance and professionalism. Regular dance classes for local students and special classes for foreigners are augmented by summer workshops, performances, new choreographies and dance and music Guru Kelacharan Mohapatra Award Festival organizing since 1995. Topic IIT Bhubaneswar. ODC has been included in Indian Institute of Technology Bhubaneswar's BTEC syllabus since 2015 as the first Indian National Technical Institute to introduce any classical dance in syllabus. Topic in Guinness World Records. Guinness World Records has acknowledged the feat of the largest congregation of Odissi dancers in a single event. 555 Odissi dancers performed at the event hosted on 23 December 2011, in the Kalinga Stadium, Bhubaneswar, Odisha. The dancers performed the Mangalakaran, Batu, Pallavi, Abhinay and Moksha dance items from the Odissi repertoire. More than 1,000 Odissi dancers performed at the World Cultural Festival March 12, 2016. This is till date the largest congregation of Odissi dancers in a single event. Topic: <inaudible> Odissi Center at Oxford University. An Odissi dance center has been opened from January 2016 at the University of Oxford. Known as Oxford Odissi Center, it is an initiative of the Odissi dancer and choreographer Basali Mohanti, who is also a postgraduate scholar at the University of Oxford. Beside holding regular Odissi dance classes at its institution, the Oxford Odissi Center also conducts Odissi dance workshops at other academic institutions in the United Kingdom. Topic. See also. Indian classical dance Gungru Odissi music Gotipua <laughs>